We just got done talking about MRPL equaling the nominal wage being that profit maximizing condition in nominal terms. But what if we want to talk about this in real terms, right? So this, right, nominal wage is going to be equal to something like, I don't know, like $15. So there's the idea of nominal, meaning we're looking at it in terms of that dollar amount. But what if we want it to be in real? And what we mean by real, what we mean by this real is it's going to be in a number of output. What exactly does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and do a very quick example. Let's say that our output is going to be equal to the number of coffees. So let's say that we work at a local coffee shop. And let's look at two separate scenarios. So I'm going to make this a little smaller so I have a little bit more room. Let's look at a scenario where the price of a coffee at this coffee shop is $4 and that we hire somebody and their marginal product of labor, which you saw in a previous video, is 10 so we know my marginal revenue product of labor is going to be $40. Let's go ahead and say that we change that price. There's an increase in demand. There's some reason the price of a cup of coffee has to go to $5. But let's say everything else stays the same. My marginal product of labor is 10 and my marginal revenue product of labor is now $50. Notice that I'm bringing in more money with this extra worker. However, they haven't become more productive or anything. It's all through the actual level of the price. Okay. I'm going to make this smaller again so that way we have a little bit more room. Now let's say that the overall wage that we're paying is $10. Well, the real wage is going to be the nominal wage divided by the price. So in this first case, our real wage would be 2.5, and that's because it's, you know, it's going to be 10 divided by 4, whereas our real wage in the second one is going to be 2 coffees, which ends up being, right, that 10 divided by 5. The reason why this is important is it is telling us that the real wage has actually declined, even though our nominal wage has stayed the same, right? We're not paying this person any more money when it comes to the nominal wage of 10, but because we were able to increase our price for whatever reason it is, they're actually bringing in more marginal revenue product of labor, right? They're bringing in more revenue. So therefore, if I needed to pay this person in number of coffees, I'd have to pay them 2.5 coffees, $4, two and a half times, gets us that $10 in wages. Whereas here, I only have to pay this person two coffees because coffees are $5 and they're getting 10, so they have to make two to earn their keep at our company. So we really care about the real wage when we're looking at overall demand. And this is going to lead us to our profit maximizing condition, which you have all seen by now in this class, which is the real wage is equal to the marginal product of labor. So we don't have to worry about prices anymore. And we don't have to worry about MRPL anymore. We can really just look at that marginal product of labor. And just as a side note, as a reminder, this is a condition, not an equality. The real wage does not always equal the marginal product of labor. This is simply a profit maximizing condition. And it's important to know the difference between a condition and an equality. And if you're still hung up on that, please contact me or look at the material that we've posted on Canvas.